<laughs> What's up, YouTube? In this video right here, I'm gonna have Jack Frost tell you about how the Kyrie supporters turned their backs on LeBron James. Now I'm gonna send y'all to Frost. Check this. LeBron out. James gets asked a question. He gives an answer. The reporters find the answer adequate. But Black America says, LeBron James, you is a sellout. Cause I'm proud of me This chopper will do your heart like Sosa song to stop the beach Even if you turn your AC on It still won't stop the heat I come through sliding in that cat to stay up off the streets Street YSL But they wasn't the only one that was pushing peas Say they won't smoke Then it's gonna be a chain react like Versace feet Sometimes I feel like Ray Cause I don't see nobody stopping me I'm out in zone three Me and Guapo speaking Guapanese Got hoes staring at my feet Like how much you drop for these They got some real street niggas Turning rap for cheese I got BBN Jack Frost. Mike. What's up, party people? I so yeah. So apparently, <laughs> LeBron James was asked a question. When he got asked this question, he gave an answer after giving his answer the black community has abandoned him okay now i'm gonna be clear on something obviously i'm not talking about the entire black community i'm talking about the people who are the voices for the black community and also i want to point out the hypocrisy just so we can be clear LeBron James didn't really do anything other than what other people were already currently doing. The difference is the relationship that LeBron James has with Kyrie Irving. So real quick, I'm going to let you know, if you haven't seen on social media, LeBron James have been getting killed. People have been saying that LeBron James is throwing Kyrie under the bus, which he is. People have been saying that LeBron James is basically a B-A-N. If you do not know what that means, I'm sorry it's for you. So, what did LeBron James say? Basically, when LeBron James was explaining, after a question, how he did not agree with Kyrie Irving, he did two things. The first thing he did wrong was make it personal. Uh, just so we can be clear, the reason why I'm saying he made it personal was he kind of made it sound like Kyrie was partly responsible for this content being made. Do you understand? So you can't condemn Kyrie for the contents of the, the media, but you can condemn him for posting media that has damaging content. Does that make sense? When LeBron James spoke about it, he spoke about it in a manner like he was blaming him for the content. That's the first thing that he did wrong. Now, whether you realize that your brain was computing that or not, I'm telling you your brain was. If you don't believe me, there's psychiatrists and there's other people that works with the way that the brain works that'll be able to tell you. That's basically what it did because of the words in which he used and because how we are just organically used to accepting certain words. Now, with that being said, the second thing that he did wrong was he did not condemn Amazon. If you notice, especially after LeBron James came out, there are a lot of individuals saying, well, why is nobody holding Amazon accountable? Now, I'm going to say something, and this is, I don't know if it's going to go over people's heads or not. I promise you, and I hope nobody's going to get too upset with me, 
But I promise you there's a person that's a part of the community that is upset that Kyrie posted that, that's making money off of whatever the hell that is, being sold wherever the hell it's being sold. So I'm not going to repeat that, but I will say, why is Amazon not being held responsible? Wink, wink. Now, this is actually the third place where LeBron effed up. I'm going to explain why before I tell you. You see, LeBron James has a personal relationship with Kyrie Irving. They've won an NBA championship together. They've played on a team and lost in the finals together. Won in the finals together. They lost in the finals together, right? I can't remember that. So, the point in which I'm trying to make is when the outside world looks at LeBron and Kyrie, it's kind of like Scotty and Pippen. It's kind of like Shaq and Kobe. Right? Right? So when LeBron James decides that he's not going to have his best Robins back, it says a lot about his character. If you notice, a lot of the people that are coming out in the defense of Kyrie Irving now is pointing out the fact that it can still be bought on Amazon. So how did he mess up in the third way? You ever heard of a shit sandwich? A compliment sandwich, pardon me. That's when you start with a compliment, you give the person the thing in which you want to criticize, and then you end with a compliment so everybody's happy. He was supposed to end this interview on a positive note about Kyrie Irving. He could have said damn near every single thing that he said. But he was supposed to end this interview talking about how much he loved his brother. Talking about how there were other people that should be held responsible even before his brother is held responsible. And then also talking about how we need to have patience and understanding. Because that is the only way to have the appropriate amount of communication so that we can get past the moment. LeBron did none of these things. So I'm going to say this. And you can believe me or not believe me. It don't matter. So I used to date this chick. And she used to be a lawyer. Right? And I say used to. Because somehow she started working in the entertainment field. So I don't know if you want to call those guys still lawyers. And anyway. She actually worked with a team of people. That worked with a couple of NBA players around the league. That had to get over psychological things. Or even sometimes physical things. I can tell you a couple of these dudes that really did smoke crack. But that's a whole nother conversation for a different day. What was said to me about LeBron James at this point when he went to Miami is. Freaking, uh, what's his dude name down in Miami? The guy that runs everything. He looks like the whole mob dude. <laughs> Pat Riley had a clause basically in there where LeBron James had to go to someone, basically a counselor. Because he had, get this now, confidence issues. He had to go to programming to get him past his confidence issues, allegedly. So I say all that to say this. Every single time I see LeBron James freaking speak. I don't ever think it's LeBron James. I think it's somebody behind him with a strength. I don't care if he's saying something positive about our community. I don't care if he's saying something negative about our community. I don't care if he's talking about actual basketball or not. Unless he's talking about plays that's happening on the freaking court that I know 
has to be his intelligence. I do not take anything that he says as of anything except for an ad being given to us by the people that control him. So you could take whatever you want with that. Or you could do a little bit of freaking research and find out that Pat Riley actually did have this happen. You could even ask me what was the problem. Oh. Anyway, with that being said, let me know what y'all guys think. Was LeBron James out of line? Was he supposed to be there for his brother? Or was he supposed to just turn his back on him like he did? And independent of what your decision is on that, do you think people should be pissed? Do you think people should be angry? Do you think the black people that are saying you gotta have this dude's back is right or not? Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification game. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I get on this one. I'm out. Can I hear make some noise for me? Yeah. Make sure y'all come out tonight because we're making a motherfucking movie. Back.